Hello students. Welcome to another tutorial on mechanical properties of matter. So in this video, we're going to concentrate on a question that I left you guys with last time. So I hope you had time to go through it and try out the question. If you did not, uh, you can pause the video and just quickly try out this question. And then after that, you can continue with us. Okay, so otherwise, I hope you guys uh, were able to identify that you have two topics that are more like combined to make this question. Uh, it's mainly mechanical properties of matter, but then there's just a minor addition of uh, circular motion. So we're going to go right ahead and see how to work it out. So, um, all right, so what are we given in the question? So in the question, we're given the mass of, um, of the object that is hanging to a wire, and then the length of the wire is 0 0.5 meters. And then I've been told that it's at the bottom, it is swinging with, the, with an angular velocity of two revolutions per second. And then also the cross-sectional area of that wire, it's 0 0.02 centimeters squared. And then now what they want us to find is the elongation of the wire. So with that in mind, what we see is we want to find the elongation of the wire, which is change in L. This is what we want to find. But uh, which term and uh, which equation gives us this thing? We notice that this comes from strain. Strain is the one that, that has change in L over L. But then to find the, the, the change in L, uh, the elongation using this, this equation, we kind of need to know what the strain is and what the, the length is. But then the question doesn't give us what the strain is. It does give us the initial length of the wire, but not the strain. Instead, the question gives us other things like the Young's modulus, the cross-sectional area, and so on. So we want to find a new equation that relates there, that gives the change in L, um, instead of just give, give, uh, from the strain, but using the Young's modulus and so on. So that quickly drives us towards this equation. Young's modulus, uh, we, de we define Young's modulus as the stress divided by the strain. And then from here, we saw that Young's modulus can also be written as, it can also be calculated by the product of force, uh, multiplying the the initial length of the wire or the material divided by the cross-sectional area multiplying the change in length. So of course, this just comes from writing this as a single fraction. Uh, okay, so this is this is area here, force over area divided by change in L over L. So this is, um, from here, this arrives to be that. So uh, starting from the second equation, this equation here, we can see that if we make change in L the subject of the formula, what we have is change in L force over the length, force multiplying length, divided by the cross-sectional area, multiplying the Young's modulus. So this is what we have. So if you look at this equation here, you quickly notice that provided you know the length which we're given, you know the area which you're also given and the Young's modulus which you're given, we can easily find, find the answer. But then there's a question mark about the force. Well, what is the force? So if we look at our system, what we're given is a wire like this. And then we draw the cross-sectional area of this wire. To this wire, we have this mass that is hanging. See, the mass exerts a force due to its weight on the wire. But then due to its rotation, it also leads to another force. So there are two forces that are kind of acting on our wire here. So we have the force due to the weight of the wire and the force due to uh, the rotation of the wire, mv squared, uh, the rotation of the mass height tied to the wire over v over r squared over r. So this side, what you have is mg. See, it is a combination of these two forces that gives the f in our equation. So f is a combination of mg and that mv squared over R. So we have to first calculate this. Then once we find what the F is, then we can perform our substitution in our equation. Okay. Now, how do we, how do we find that F? So we have F is equals to mg plus mv squared over R. So what are we given? We're given the mass. The mass is 15 kg. Gravity is 9.8. Plus, this is 15. Now we have a problem again. This V, what is it? Well, the question doesn't give us what V is, but it gives us what the angular velocity is. That is two revolutions per 
second. So this is where now the, the other topic comes in, circular motion. From circular motion, you should know how to convert this um, from uh, angular velocity into linear velocity. The V here is linear velocity, but the value given is an angular velocity. And to convert, we have V is equals to R omega. But then for this to work, this uh, has to be in radians per second. So if you want to, to see a, a detailed description of how you convert, how you do the, the conversions and so on, I'll leave a link to, to that video where I introduced circular motion. You can just watch it as well. Okay, so we know to say, um, let, me, let me just do it this side. So we know to say the angular velocity in revolutions uh, per second, you just have to multiply this by two pi in radians divided by one revolution. And then this is going to give the angular velocity as four pi uh, in radians per second. So we have our angular velocity now in radians per second. Now, the next thing is, what is our V? So we get our V using the formula we saw earlier on, our omega. So from here, what we have is um, the R. Now, this is, this is a key thing. You guys have to understand which one is our R. So see, this, this wire or the mass at the bottom, it is rotating about this point. So the R is taken as the distance from the point of rotation. And this is the point of rotation. So it is taken as the distance from here to the bottom. So this is our R. And from the question, the length of the wire is 0 0.5 meters. So that becomes our radius uh, in the uh, radius of rotation. So that becomes 0 0.5 multiplying the omega, which is 4 pi. And if you perform this uh, multiplication, what we end up with is just 2 pi as our, as our linear velocity. So in our formula where we had f is equals to 15 by 9.8, plus 15. Now where we have V, now we have two pi, but this is squared divided by the radius again, that is 0 0.5. And if we perform this calculation, uh, F comes out as um, one, three, three, one point, that's three, five. So this is a long thing, you can, you can round it off, but I always advise that you round off the final value one three one so this is a four so it is in newtons so next up we go back to our formula for the elongation which is the force multiplying the original length divided by the cross-sectional area and then multiplying the young's modulus okay so from here now we can just perform our substitution so if if you recall um the force of course we're just from finding it that's one three three one uh, we can we can we can round it off. I think at this point, but uh, mainly I'll ask you to use the full one and then only round off the final answer. But since it's very long, I'll just leave it at that point. And then what we have next is uh, let me just write it to two decimal places. That's three five newtons. And then next up we have the the Young's modulus. So the Young's modulus in the question is given to us, and that's two by ten to the power eleven. Then the next thing, the length of the wire, the initial length of the wire, that's 0 0.5 meters. And then of course the Young's modulus, the units are Newton per meter squared. And then now the cross-sectional area A. So the cross-sectional area is given as, that's 0 0.02 centimeters squared. So you guys should be able to see that if you convert this to meter squared, this comes up as 0 0.02 by 10 to the power negative four meters squared. Okay, so with this in mind, now we can perform our substitution. Remember our formula is change in L is equal to, we have the force multiplying the original length divided by the cross-sectional area multiplying the Young's modulus. So when we perform our substitution here, what we have is our force, I'll write it in the, uh, and I'll use the full one, but I'll write it to three to two decimal places. That's three five multiplying the original length. That is zero point five, 
divided by the area, the cross-sectional area uh, in meters, of course, 0 0.02 by 10 to the minus four. This is multiplying Young's modulus, which is two by 10 to the power 11. So when you do this and simplify, you see that what you get is the change in length becomes 0 0.0 uh, 0166 and then 4191. This is in meters. So from here, of course, you can convert this to millimeters. The millimeters just multiply this by a thousand. It comes up as 1.66 uh, millimeters. Okay, so this is the, the elongation that they were looking for, the elongation change in L that the question was asking for. So I hope you guys were able to follow really. It's, um, all, all the steps we, we, we used here are very basic. We're still doing just the uh, just basic stuff. Um, yeah, just keep on practicing, try to go through the solutions if you, if you, um, if maybe you have a challenge somewhere. But of course you can always get in touch with me if you want to, to go through this. Um, if maybe you have a question on this or you want to join one of my live sessions, you can always get in touch with me. Otherwise, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at the next question, which is this one. You guys can uh, can go through this in advance, try it out, see what you find. And then after that, we're going to work it out together in the, in the next session. Again, this involves um, another topic that we've described uh, already. I'll leave a link to that topic as well. It will be the second link I attach. Otherwise, um, we'll see you in the next video. Um, this was your tutor.